Today we're going to be talking about agriculture, particularly conservation agriculture, which is a way of doing farming which cares for the health of the soil. And the reason behind this is that if you have healthy soil, that's where most crops are growing and where they get most of their nutrients. And so if they have a healthy source of food from the soil, then it will make the plants healthier than those who are growing in an unhealthy soil. And we're going to be looking at some of the characteristics of that kind of farming. But first, what kind of soil is healthy? Um, one of the major aspects of a healthy soil is having a good amount of organic matter in it. And organic matter, a very simple definition of organic, is something that came from a living creature. So it once was alive or it came from something that was alive. So for example, manure came from a living animal bones, dead pieces of animals, those are also organic. Leaves, stems, roots from plants are organic as well. And as those things go into the soil, microorganisms like bacteria break them down into tiny pieces and make them available to plants. And it helps to improve the soil in terms of giving the plants the nutrients that they need. And it also helps to make the soil better able of holding moisture so that when it's very dry, the soil still has more moisture than one that doesn't have very much organic matter, and it improves the texture of the soil. Three of the major practices of conservation agriculture are one, making sure the soil is covered as much as possible. Sometimes at the beginning of the season, this might not be as easy because you're just planting for the first time, but the idea is that you keep the soil covered either with mulch, so plant material that you use to cover the soil, or with living plants. So trying to keep something growing or covering the soil at all times is an important aspect of conservation agriculture. <clears throat> a second practice that's important is making sure that you reduce the amount of tillage of the soil. Excuse me. <clears throat> so instead of plowing all the time, try to reduce the amount of times that you plow or eliminate plowing altogether. And just dig in the place where you're planting. So digging, planting holes or a trench for planting instead of digging up and plowing the entire garden. And then the third practice is mixing and rotating crops. Instead of growing just one thing alone and then planting the same thing every season over and over, grow two or more crops together and then change what you're growing in the same garden from year to year or season to season. If you can manage it, mulch is great for covering the soil. So you can see I've got some different leaves and grass all the way down to the soil there. And it's reasonable for a small vegetable garden like this, but for uh, acres of land it's not very practical. And so cover crops are a better way to keep the soil covered there. And then you can later cut them down and use them as mulch so you don't have to carry it to your garden. Uh, if you're going to use mulch and then plant vegetables, you can kind of clear the mulch away where you're planting, like here, just this bare spot. And then once your seeds have sprouted and they've gotten a little bit bigger like this, then you can put the mulch back in between them. Ideally, if you're using mulch to cover the ground, it should cover the ground completely, but even uh, this amount of, of mulch or crop residue on the ground is helpful because it's adding organic matter to the soil and it's providing some protection from the sun and from evaporation. In case you're wondering, this one is called tephrosia or fish bean and it also is a legume. It adds nitrogen to the soil and you can use it as an intercrop with maize, for example. And you can also grow it alone, like I am here. And then as it's grown up, you can cut it down and use it as mulch. You can also use the leaves dried and mix them with your grain for storage to help protect them from insect pests. Legumes are plants like beans, and they have a special relationship with certain kinds of soil bacteria, where they create little homes for the bacteria on their roots. And then the bacteria as they live on the little nodules on the roots of these plants, the bacteria take nitrogen from the air, 
which plants would normally not be able to get and they turn it into a type of nitrogen that plants can use and so they're called nitrogen fixing bacteria and so they help the plants by adding nitrogen that they need for their growth and if you leave the roots of the plants in the field after you say harvest your beans then it will help with the next crop that comes after it. So we've seen mulch as an example of a way to keep the soil covered but you can also use what are called cover crops or some kind of plant that's growing in your garden so that it keeps the soil covered at all times. So in this example I've got maize and then in between the maize I have a legume that's called jack bean or cannavalia and the jack bean is filling in the space in between the maize so that there's not a lot of bare soil around them and so that protects the soil from the sunshine and also helps to keep the moisture in when it when it rains the moisture goes into the soil and then when the sun comes out the soil is able to keep that moisture instead of being dried up by the sun you can use cover crops as a single crop also to reduce weeds or to prepare the soil for growing something the next season. So this is an example of that. I've got mukuna and you can see that it's completely covered the garden here and it's very vigorous and climbing vine and so it's suppressing the weeds and it's also keeping the soil nice and soft and moist underneath it. I don't need to do any weeding here and then next season I can just cut this one down and leave it there as mulch and then I can plant my next crop directly into the mulch. Mukuna is also a good feed for animals. My rabbits really like to eat the leaves from this and then you can feed the leaves as well as the entire seed pods to any animals that are ruminants. So goats and sheep and cows, they can eat the entire plant. But if you want to use this as a cover crop for your garden, you don't want to be feeding it all to animals or letting them graze it down to the ground because then it removes the benefit that it's giving to the soil. You can use mukuna as an intercrop with maize, but you have to be careful about planting it later than you planted the maize. You can see here, this maize is on the edge in between the plot of mukuna and the one that's jack beans and maize, and the mukuna is already trying to climb up the maize. And so if you plant the maize and mukuna at the same time, the mukuna will grow faster and tear down the maize completely. Here I have cassava with cow peas intercropped in between them, and you can see how the cow peas have filled in the space underneath the cassava, and the cassava is growing up in between it, and since cow peas are a short season crop, they'll be done before the cassava is ready to harvest in another year. Pigeon peas are another good cover crop of sorts. They don't spread out over the ground, but you can plant them in between a crop like maize, and as they grow, the maize is also growing up, and once you harvest the maize, the pigeon peas will con continue to grow into a very large perennial bush. They keep coming back, they continue growing from season to season, and you can cut them down completely and then use the branches as mulch. Animals will also eat these leaves, and you can eat the seeds as a human food. We've seen some examples of intercropping, so like this one, the jack bean and the maize, the cow peas and the cassava. We talked about other ones like planting pigeon peas with maize or uh, mixing other kinds of um, legumes like the mukuna with maize but planting them later so that they don't tear down the maize. And uh, these are all very helpful but if you want to just grow one crop at a time that's also okay but it's good to make sure that you don't keep planting that same thing only in the same field from season to season so you want to think about the family of crops that you're growing so if you're growing something like millet or sorghum or maize that are all grains then you want to plant the next season something that is not a grain so if you planted a grain, then the next season you could plant something that's like a tuber, so sweet potatoes or cassava 
or you could plant something that's a legume like beans or cow peas depending on where you live it could be green peas or you could plant a vegetable so you want to rotate those different families of crops there are also pests which will attack certain crops but not others so for example if you have a pest which affects maize and then you have something growing in between your rows of maize it can create somewhat of a barrier to prevent the pest from moving as quickly through your maize from one plant to another there's also a parasitic weed called striga and it affects grains so sorghum maize millet and it grows off of the roots of the those plants and takes the nutrients from them instead of from the soil and if you plant one of those grains in the same field over and over then that parasitic weed keeps coming back keeps on affecting your grain but if you change from a grain to another type of crop then you don't give anything for the striga to feed on and you can break that cycle so that it dies out and the same thing is true for pests so you might have a pest that affects your sweet potatoes if you grow sweet potatoes in the same field over and over that pest keeps on reproducing and it keeps on affecting your potatoes every year but if you grow sweet potatoes this year and then you switch to say beans the next year that pest will come out looking for sweet potatoes but it won't find its food and so it won't be able to survive so mixing and rotating crops can help with pests also plants have different nutrient needs and they can grow their their main edible part from different different places so like for our cassava and cow peas for example the cassava is focusing its energy on growing those tubers underground the cow peas are growing their seeds and leaves above the ground and while the cassava also has leaves and stems you are utilizing both underground for a crop as well as above ground and so mixing those two together is helpful in terms of using space well and then also using different nutrients that those crops need.